Hey everybody, welcome to Altium Academy. I am your host, Zach Peterson, also your local technical consultant for Altium. And today we are gonna talk about solder bridges, what they are, how to use them, what they look like in your PCB layout, and some of the advantages that they bring in terms of making your board a little more flexible and testable. Now, I recently received a question about how to create a solder bridge in Altium Designer, and it's actually related to an article that I wrote on the Altium blog. So we'll link to that article in the description, and then I'm gonna show you how you can actually create your own solder bridge footprint in Altium Designer. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, hey everybody, so before we get started, let's take a look at this question from one of our viewers. Robert writes, Hello, I watched many of your videos on YouTube, but I can't find out how to make a solder bridge jumper. I am a beginner with Altium Designer, and so far I use 0201 resistors, but it does not look professional. Best regards, Robert. So a solder bridge is essentially a section of copper that makes it very easy to connect or disconnect a trace or a component, whatever you want to do. I think a good way to start is with an example. Let's just say that you have a component and you have a pin coming off here and then we have a trace and we want to have a reconfigurable connection right here in this area between this trace and another section of trace. So maybe this goes off to another component or into a via or whatever else. But we wanna have a section of copper here that makes it very easy to either disconnect this connection along this trace or to make a new connection. And so what we can do is we can use a solder bridge. Now a solder bridge is essentially a bunch of copper that has a very thin gap. And then right here in this gap between these two pads, you can fill it in with a small section of additional copper. So this is just thin enough that if you really wanted to, you could cut it. Or if your PCB is fabricated without this, you could actually bridge these two pads with solder. Or if you really wanted to, you could put like say a small, you know, zero ohm resistor right here across these two pads and solder them. And that's the idea behind a solder jumper is you're essentially jumping this connection or disconnecting it using some solder or just by cutting the copper in between these two pads. This is really great because it's a really quick way to reconfigure the board if you need to. Because this copper is exposed, you can also use this as a test point if you want. You could also use a small conductor or a small section of wire and just temporarily bridge this by hand if you want to in order to test this connection over off into this direction. And it's a really easy way to just play with the board and reconfigure the connection if you need to. It's actually a lot easier than uh, marking something DNI or DNP and then coming back and mounting it later. These two things are gonna be short enough that if you really want to, you could try and bridge this with a small section of solder or just a small wire. The trick to using a solder bridge effectively is of course to make the right sized footprint. So a good rule of thumb I would say for a solder bridge is to basically create what is a pad but with a small section or a small gap in it that is essentially broken open. So here, this dimension, typically about one millimeter or 40 mils. And then here, this is basically a half circle, so about 0.5 millimeter or 20 mils. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna basically create two variations of this. You create one that's just like this, where you have all of this copper exposed, so no solder mask. Same thing over here on this side, we've got no solder mask. Um, and then you're gonna create another variation where you just have a very thin trace of copper right here. And this could be as small as like, you know, five mil wide section of copper. So this is gonna be just large enough to where if you really need to, you could literally just cut this and it would open up. And then if you ever needed to bridge it again, remember this is exposed copper. It's gonna be uh, close enough together that if you need to, you could actually bridge this with some solder. Now, if you leave this totally open, now what you've done is you've left some open copper here and this exposed copper is large enough that you could actually take a small zero ohm resistor if you wanted to bridge this connection and then just mount it here. So you could put some solder paste on these pads, 
take your tweezers, put the resistor here, get your soldering iron, and it's gonna solder right to these pads. So these pads are typically large enough that if you're mounting a small component here on like a small zero ohm resistor, you're gonna have enough room to be able to put solder paste down and then solder it reliably to these pads without getting the pads too hot and causing them to lift off the board. So just watch your solder temperature because if your soldering iron temperature is too high, you will lift these pads off the board. So that's what a solder bridge is. And this is not a default component in Altium Designer, at least as, not as far as I've seen. Uh, maybe it's buried in some library somewhere. But generally, if you're gonna do a solder bridge, you have to make one on your own. So let's go ahead and check out how to do exactly that. Okay, so now that we know what a solder bridge is, I'm going to create a solder bridge component. So I'm gonna create one that has uh, a circular pad style. You could create one that has a square pad style, but I'm just gonna show you how to do it with a circular pad style like I uh, demonstrated in the article that is in the description. So I like to do this through libraries. I've added two new libraries to this project. This is one of the example projects that we've been using. You could certainly just do this by you know going up to file and new components. You could do it through your 365 workspace, um, however you wanna do it. I normally do it through libraries just because I'm usually starting with a project that is on my local machine. Machine. To get started, first we're just going to give this a name. We'll just call this solder bridge and we'll give it a designator. Um, we're just going to use SB as the designator. You could, you know, use whatever you want, but for this I'm just going to use SB. Now I'm just going to place a couple of pins. I'm going to give these pins designators and names. Now you don't really need to display these because the pins are, you know, swappable. So it's really not going to matter um, dis about displaying them in the actual symbol itself when you're in the schematic. So I'm just going to hide these. And then you'll notice these are pretty long. So I'm just going to make them shorter. Now we're ready to draw out the symbol. And so here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place an arc. I'll let it touch there. And I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to cap this off with a line. So now that I've done this, this is our solder bridge symbol. So it's pretty simple. So I've left it disconnected here to show that this is not going to be connected in the PCB layout. So this would be an open solder bridge. If I wanted to short it, it's obviously best to uh, use a different symbol than what you would use for an open. So I can just, you know, bridge it like this. And then we'll just name this solder bridge open and then we'll save it and there we go. So sometimes you'll want to actually, you know, display the designator in the PCB layout. I mean, if you want to put it into the silk screen layer, you can do that manually. You can hide it, um, whatever the case may be. But the point here with this is that we have these circular pads here. We're going to actually reflect that when we do the PCB footprint. Here I've started a new PCB footprint and I'm just going to draw this out to get started. I will just do an arc, go ahead and make this a semicircle. Now for the radius here, I had mentioned that, you know, about a millimeter is fine. So I'm going to leave the radius here at 20 mils. That gives me a 40 mil diameter. That's a millimeter. I'll go ahead and move this here and then I'm going to replicate it. And then we'll do the same kind of thing. We'll cap it off with a line. And then now we want to fill in these regions with copper. And then what we're going to do is we're going to place a pad. So the easiest way to fill in some of these regions with copper is honestly to just kind of draw it out like this. If you really want to get detailed, you can always add more vertices to this region. You don't necessarily have to do that. Just make sure that when you place this, you define this as copper. And we're going to copy this, move it over here. And then we're ready to place some pads. So normally, if you go in here to place a pad, you'll notice here, um, it's gonna place something that's pretty big. There's gonna be a hole. Um, we're just gonna set this to top layer. And you'll notice also that it automatically applies a solder mask expansion rule. Here, I'm actually going to set it to zero because we don't want to apply the solder mask expansion around this pad. What we actually want to do is apply the solder mask expansion around this entire footprint. So after setting this pad, I'm going to set the designator and then I'm going to make the radius smaller. Let's just make it just 10 mils is fine. And then we can move it over here and just copy it over to the other side and change the designator. 
And there we go. The copper placement is basically done. So this is an open solder bridge. And we just want to check the distance here. You'll notice this is 10 mils. And that should be okay for most applications. You could make it a little wider if you want. And then place another line here. So this line is going to bridge these two pads. So now we have a uh, shorted solder bridge. Here this width, generally recommend making it smaller. So maybe like six mils is fine. And this is going to be pretty simple to cut when you need to. You could also just, you know, bridge this with a zero ohm resistor if it were open, whatever you need to do. So the next piece that we need to add in here is we need to add some solder mask expansion around this entire thing. Now, because this thing is oval shaped and that can be a little tricky, one way to do it is just with like the full circle tool. Here, I'm going to make the radius pretty small, but I'm going to make the width pretty big. And so by doing that, I now get a pretty large circle that I can essentially kind of place around this component. I'm going to need to make it a little bigger, but I can uh, place it uh, so that it covers this entire component. But before you do that, you need to take this and put it on top solder layer. So um, as you go ahead and place this here, um, if we just increase the width a little bit, say 28, so we're just about there. Let's make it 29. So now we've just got a little bit of opening around the edge of this pad. We can copy this over. We can do kind of do the same thing. So as you increase the width and the radius um, in small amounts, eventually you'll be able to, you know, totally bridge this and make a nice smooth uh, solder mask opening right here. And one thing you could even do if you really wanted to is to just put a small line like this, take this, Put it on the top solder, take this and copy it over, and there you go. So now we got a nice clean solder bridge. Um, you really want to clean it up, make this just a little bit wider, we'll make this 12. You can move it down a little bit if you wanted to. So you can play with what this solder mask opening looks like. But at this point we're basically done. We've got our solder bridge, it's shorted, and now what we can do is we can go over here to the schematic and then we'll just go ahead and uh, add in the footprint. So to add in the footprint, uh, just click the button, hit browse. Now we've got both of these in our project, so they'll both appear here. Now, you know, when you see this, you might think, hey, that's not how I drew it. Just check it by looking in 3D. So this is what it's actually gonna look like. Go ahead and hit okay, hit okay. And then you'll notice here in this actual window, it actually does appear the way it's supposed to appear. Now, the last thing that we need to do is, you'll notice here in the design item ID, we enabled it solder bridge open. We're just gonna change that to solder bridge short. And now this is done, it is ready to place. So just for fun, I'm gonna go ahead and place it. Here you can see it's placing it in a new sheet, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and give it a designator. Just name it SB1. Now, just to see what this actually looks like in the PCB layout, I'm gonna go ahead and update the PCB. We'll just focus on just this solder bridge component. Let's hit execute, and you'll see that it appears right here in the PCB layout. So now I can move it over. You'll notice something here. Here, you see that there's a design rule violation. So why is there a design rule violation here since this is a component? Well, the reason is that we made this little tiny track of copper very thin, and it's less than 10 mils. So if you go to design rules, check out the width, you'll see the min width is set to 10. However, if we change this to five, remember this matches for all objects in the board. If we hit OK or apply, you will then see that this rule clears up. And then if you want, you can check this out in 3D. And uh, this is what it looks like. Now you'll notice here, this designator does appear in the silk screen layer. Now, do you need it to be in the silk screen layer? Is it required? Well, it's not really required, but it might be a good idea to show the designator, especially if you're gonna use this for any kind of debug, because then you can uh, make notes about which specific solder bridges you cut based on the designator. This is also useful if you are communicating with somebody else, you're collaborating on a design, and you need to call out a specific solder bridge, you can do that through its designator. 
Okay, that is it for this tutorial. Stay tuned for more tutorials in the future. All right, everybody, thanks for watching this short demo. And if you haven't gotten your free trial of Altium Designer, go check out the exclusive link in the description. You can get a 30-day free trial of Altium Designer, and you can start making some of your own solder bridges as well as any other footprint you can imagine. All right, thanks everybody for watching again. Leave your questions and comments in the comments section. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, help us hack that YouTube algorithm. And definitely on this stuff, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks.